Listen, babe, I want to talk to you about, I think, maybe my favorite court card within the tarot, and that is the knights, okay? These are the lovers of the courts. Krishna is going to join us. Sorry, he just jumped up here. Now, you may be saying, why would you refer to them as the lovers of the courts? <laughs> Where the pages are oftentimes seen as sort of this childlike wonder, this innocence embodied. They're the first little inklings of the work that we would do within the element of the suit. The knight is kind of like the step after that. This is where we're actually doing work within the element of the suit. This is where we're starting to venture out. We're meeting people. We're mingling with people. This is where we're starting to cultivate relationships with people. This is where those relationships often take a sexual and romantic turn for us in our lives. When I'm doing a love reading, I always go to the knights. I like to think that each of us are sort of one of these knights. We're embodying this energy of one of these knights at any given moment. We will probably at some point embody all four of them, but in relationships, you're one of these knights. That probably sounds like a lot, so let me try to break that down a little bit. The Knight of Swords, this is going to be that lover who is super quick-witted, always keeps us laughing. The conversation never slows down. It seems to effortlessly flow, but the silences are not awkward. This night is so fun. Oh, and remember, I know I've said this before in other videos, this has nothing to do with gender expression at all. We are all knights, regardless of your gender expression. We are one of these four at any point in time. <laughs> or like I said, we're moving through all of them. So this is not simply a man, right? This can be anyone of any gender, of any gender expression. Now, the Knight of Wands. Usually we see this show up as that person who we feel an immediate physical attraction to. We see them, they're hot. We want them. When it comes to the Knight of Cups, this is going to be that person that we feel like we can immediately be disarmed around, right? We somehow end up opening up. We're on the date and suddenly we're talking about things that we wouldn't hardly ever talk to someone about. This night makes us feel really comfortable and disarmed. Now, are y'all ready for the Knight of Coins or the Knight of Pentacles? Listen. Okay, this knight here, I often refer to the knight of coins as the, the knight of souls because this is that person where like all of our boxes are sort of being checked. We feel disarmed. We feel this person. This is this often shows up in a reading where the lover or your lover, you or your lover, it's that immediate you go, oh, I've known this person before. I've known them in a, in a past life. I've known them. However, like it transcends ages. You know, when you hear people talk about, oh, I met and I knew this person was my person. Knight of Coins, right here, Knight of Souls. I also like to do this really fun sort of uh, exercise sometimes with people when they say, I want to attract such and such type of a lover. Well, considering what I just told you, you can sort of do that. You can say, I want someone who's super funny. Well, go to your Knight of Swords and do a reading. You can manifestation map with the court cards. Actually, I think I'll do a separate video on that. Stay tuned. You can work with the Knights to manifest the type of lover you want to attract. If you're looking for someone who's super fun, quick-witted, you know, if you're looking for someone who's just going to give you time and attention for a day and maybe short term, it doesn't have to be super long or committed. This would be if you want to find someone who's just conventionally attractive. The Knight of Cups is usually referred to as the Knight in Shining Armor. This is someone who's conventionally beautiful or attractive. You know, maybe you just want to have a hot date for an event. Then again, you might want to go all the way. You might be looking for your long-term forever person. And you may go to your Knight of Coins and say, Hey, pal, can you please search the world, go out there into the world, the ether, transcend, and are you able to find my person, my forever person? One of my favorite things to do when I meet new people is, especially uh, people who are in a relationship, 
is to try to just observe quietly, observe how they interact with one another. Because of, again, in my brain, I'm always like trying to identify people as whichever night that they may be at that moment in time. I know I talk a lot about working with the court cards, but I think these are probably the guys who actually really love to work with you, probably because they're knights. They do the work of the realm, you know? So don't ever be afraid to go to a knight and sort of ask for help. Chances are you're gonna get a really good response from one of these knights. If you'd like for us to do a deep dive into each of the knights and really kind of go into what they mean and how they show up as lovers, or maybe how they show up for you as a lover, we can definitely do that. Just let me know, because I'd love to do that. But would you find it interesting if we talked about one card just for one video? Let me know, I don't know. We'll go, I'll go based off what feedback I get, maybe, we'll see. Before I end the video, I wanna talk about, again, how these, the knights, in some way even relate back to the actual lover's card of the major arcana. Now, we don't have to get into too much detail or the arguments about what order the court cards should go in, but a lot of people tend to see the page, knight, queen, and king in that order. If we were to take them and number them, the page would of course be 11, the knight would be 12, queen would be 13, and then of course the king would be 14. Now we can look at that number and go directly to the major arcana card. But these being 12, it would be the hanged man, right? But we could go even a step further and we can divide those numbers down. The same in the Major Arcana as how the Devil, number 15, is seen to be linked to the Lovers because we take 5 plus 1, 6, the number of the Lovers. We then take the number of the Lovers, 6, and divide that in half to be 3, whereas the Knights would be number 12, 2 plus 1, 3. Kind of a weird take, a little bit of a weird thought, but definitely something to consider. And then also the relationship to the hanged man, this sort of flipped perspective where the knights bring us out of that sort of page energy and into this realm of we're going to actually go do something because now we see the world differently. We sort of we have access to the world now, right? And I also just really quickly want to touch on the number three within the knights, which is we have three major players here, okay? We have the knight himself, we have the horse, and then we have the relic. So the symbol of the suit of the element, which again is half of six, which would be the lovers, which is also linked to the empress. There's a lot, like we could really go deep here, but I'll spare you. One last thing to touch on before we end the video is sort of the honorary knight of the tarot who we find in the Major Arcana, and that is, weirdly enough, the Death card. Because we see, of course, a knight showing up on a horse. We can look at the resemblance that the Death card has to the actual knights. Some would say it would be the Knight of Coins. Some would say it would be the Knight of Cups. And we could also talk about how both the Knight of Coins and the Knight of Cups ride in the same direction as the Knight within the Death card, while the Knight of Swords and the Knight of Wands ride in the opposite direction of the Death card. It is as if somehow the Coins and the Cups sort of ride with Death, while the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords, either, depending on how you want to see it, they either ride toward or ride away. So many interesting things to consider. The, the Knights are definitely one of the deeper cards of the courts. There's just so much like activity and vigor, energy, mana, like it's all sort of happening within the Knights. If you want to deepen your love readings, I beg of you, please sit down with your Quarant and help them identify one of these knights as themselves. And then do your reading and your spread around that knight. I'm telling you, the results, you're not ready. You will be so impressed. I also see the knights as being sort of harbingers of information. Like, I know a lot of people would look at the page as being this wealth of knowledge, but 
the knights, because of this activity, because they ride their horse, we can use them within a spread to sort of move through the realm, right? Say you have a specific question, you have a specific thing you'd like to manifest. Let's say you want to manifest something in the realm of money or with your career. Find your knight in your deck and then do your reading around that. Ask your knight, say, please, I ask of you, please go out and bring back to me the information I need in order to reach my goal or in order to manifest this one specific thing. Use the knight in that way. Or I say use, but like work with the knight in that way. As always with the tarot, the possibilities are essentially endless. They're going to go as deep as you want to go and they're going to ride with you as far as you want to ride. I can assure you this is not the last time that we are going to sit down and we're going to talk about the knights. But this is just something that I kind of wanted to throw out there and share with you. It's a starting point for the conversation, if you will. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.